Vandals hit a Golden Valley church and stole an entire air conditioning unit. As police told me, it's the latest in a string of crimes at the place of worship. Oh, Jesus, would it come? Masses this past weekend at the Church of St. Margaret Mary in Golden Valley came with extra fans and an announcement about why the air was warmer than normal. Starting in July, we will be uh, moving Masses over to Visitation Hall where the air conditioning is working. Not working because, according to Police Chief Virgil Green, someone stole it, the whole unit. I think one Sunday morning they turned everything on and everything was blowing out hot air and then they went around and determined that uh, everything had been stripped. Police say church staff reported a whole list of problems, including trespassing, trash left behind, camping out in the parking lot, and even someone stealing a security camera. People are even just showing up on the weekends, setting up and kind of like having cookouts or just hanging out on the church grounds. And so, you know, it kind of makes you question people's um, you know, integrity, that this is a sacred ground. Why would you come to a church to, to do that? In response, police have increased patrols in the area and will even park a squad at the church from time to time. We are, are just being good partners to our faith-based organization as well as our uh, business community. Golden Valley police are working with Hennepin County Sheriff's deputies to investigate the thefts and other crimes at the church. Cities across the Northwest Metro will recognize Juneteenth as a holiday. It celebrates the liberation of the last slaves in Texas following the Civil War. It became a federal holiday last year. This is the first year Minnesota recognized Juneteenth as a holiday. So city, state and federal offices will be closed Monday, June 19th. Several cities, including Brooklyn Park, Brooklyn Center, and Maple Grove, will host celebrations to commemorate the Juneteenth holiday. While many associate summer with long days, mosquitoes, and road construction, many also look forward to dining at their favorite restaurants outside. As Kevin Miller reports, there's a reason many restaurants have upped their patio dining game. All right. And this is all kind of started by COVID. One of the positives that came out of it, turning our parking lot into a patio for people to be able to kind of stretch out, enjoy kind of a beer garden vibe. In the days of masks and hand sanitizer, summer weather during the COVID pandemic brought a newfound passion for patios. It really just expands what we're already doing out, out to the outside a little bit more, and people are loving it right now. It's very open, very airy, you know, little pockets of sun if you want sun, little pockets of shade if you want shade. Many restaurants open new or temporary patios in the past few years. It's a good vibe all the way around. They've proved to be popular with customers. It's just nice people having a quiet time, really a nice place to nice place to eat. Several restaurants in downtown Robbinsdale revamped their patios in time for the latest summer heat wave. Our number one goal is to provide a place where people can get together and relax, enjoy each other, you know, in the, the downtown feel here. We decided to up our patio game this year. Nouvelle Brewing just gave their patio a serious upgrade. But it really just allows people to have their own space, right? The more space you can give people, the more they feel comfortable coming in and hanging out. The Star Tribune recently named them one of the best patios in the Twin Cities. We wanted to keep it a little bit more open air and put these bigger shade awnings up, but we wanted to make it feel a little bit more tropic. Feel like you're maybe on vacation having some pizza. Nouvelle built their own planners and worked with a furniture company to design their chairs. With the different heights of the boards, I could, I could kind of play with the design, so. Down the street, Birdhouse also spruced up their patio. When, you know, the other restaurants or neighbors, all these other great places around the cities have patios, it's having some outdoor seating is, is almost necessary to survive. It's a little slice of heaven. It's a great place to come to. I'd, I'd really recommend it. When you're wrapped up in the winter and in the house all the time for so long, it's nice to have a place where you can get out in the summer. Well, obviously, we want to give people good food, good drink on top of that, but, you know, just a place to have a good time. In Robbinsdale, Kevin Miller, CCX News. Meanwhile, a restaurant with outdoor patio dining plans to open this summer in Crystal, Tequila Town Authentic Mexican Cuisine will take the spot of the former El Loro restaurant. The owners are currently doing interior renovations. City Council approved a liquor license this week. The owners say Tequila Town will be much different than El Loro when the renovation is complete. They're planning to open the new restaurant hopefully sometime next month. A pizza shop in Robbinsdale received surprise recognition recently. You've gotten 100 texts from all your friends and different people that 
follow the restaurant and they are all sending you the exact same article and you're like, well, I don't know anything about this because Food & Wine doesn't tell you that they're going to put something out. That's Mike Brown, co-owner of Pig Ate My Pizza, who found out that his pizza made a national best of list. Food and Wine magazine ranked Pig Ate My Pizza, located inside Novell Brewing, as the number four pizza venue in the country. Brown credits his team for the honor. The recognition is amazing. It takes a crazy amount of people, a huge team, to produce the pizza that we produce here and the style of pizza that we do. To make the dough at Pig Ate My Pizza, it takes days because of the fermenting process. Pizza choices range from conventional options to unique flavors like chicken parmesan and a crushed Dorito taco pizza. And a young man with an eye towards safety recently brought home a cool prize for his school. Dylan Sudan, a student at Heritage Christian Academy, developed a fire escape plan for his home. He's in fourth grade. He made a poster that took top prize in Maple Grove's fire safety poster contest. So to honor Dylan's work, his school received a traveling trophy of sorts, kind of like the Stanley Cup, kind of. It's been in the community for nearly 50 years. Dylan's work was also entered into the statewide contest, and he got fourth place in the state. Congratulations to Dylan. People ask, how your children learn how to ride a bike, and you didn't. I didn't teach them. I just created an environment where they taught themselves, and all I had to do was be there.